Officer Jackson was conducting his usual patrol when a young orphan girl approached him at a dimly lit street corner. With tears in her eyes, she looked up at him and whispered three words that sent chills through him. These words uncovered a truth that would lead to unraveling a complex mystery filled with danger, prompting Officer Jackson to take immediate action. Shocked to see the girl wandering alone at such an early hour, Officer Jackson scanned the area for any sign of her parents, only to realize she was by herself. As she walked directly towards him, he could tell from her expression that something was amiss. Standing in front of him, Officer Jackson inquired about her name, her origins, her parents, and asked every conceivable question, but the young girl remained silent, unable to speak. Fortunately, Officer Jackson was not alone in this situation. His colleague, Officer Maroy, was in the patrol car and had observed the entire interaction. Quickly, she joined Jackson and the young girl, suggesting that she would scout the surrounding area to potentially locate the girl's origins. There was a possibility that her parents were nearby, and the girl was simply lost. While Officer Jackson remained with the girl, Officer Maroy, along with four other police officers who had promptly arrived to assist, began a thorough search of the vicinity. Given the early hour, the streets were mostly empty, with most people still in bed or just starting their day. To aid in the search, Officer Jackson took a photo of the girl and shared it with all the officers involved. They embarked on a door-to-door -door inquiry, showing the photo to anyone who answered, inquiring if they recognized the girl or had seen her before. However, the response was consistently unhelpful. Despite their efforts, no one seemed willing to provide any useful information. Officer Maroy grew suspicious, suspecting that some of them might not be telling the whole truth. Their efforts were not entirely in vain, as one older woman, who initially seemed reluctant to engage with the police, recognized the girl from the photo. Unlike most of the people they had spoken to, she reluctantly provided a crucial piece of information, mentioning that the girl was an orphan with no parents. When Officer Maroy tried to probe further, the woman's discomfort visibly increased until she abruptly shut the door in her face. Realizing the challenge in extracting more information from this woman, Officer Maroy contemplated the need for either an arrest or a search warrant to investigate her house further. For the time being, their search reached a standstill. They had some information, the girl was possibly an orphan, but her origins remained a mystery. If the woman's claim was accurate, questions about where the girl had been living all this time arose. Had she been on the streets, someone might have noticed her earlier. It was unclear who, if anyone, had been taking care of her. Feeling somewhat defeated by these unanswered questions, Officer Maroy returned to where Officer Jackson was waiting with the young girl in the back seat of the police car. They now had a glimmer of information but were still far from understanding the full picture of the young girl's situation. The next step in resolving the mystery was to bring the orphan girl to the police station and continue their investigation from there. After the car ride back, Officers Jackson and Maroy wasted no time and initiated a citywide alert, disseminating the girl's picture across various platforms. As the image circulated throughout the city, calls inundated the police station, each potentially holding a clue that could unravel the mystery surrounding the girl's identity. The once-controlled atmosphere of the police station transformed into a bustling hub of activity, overwhelmed by the influx of calls, each claiming to possess vital information about the young girl's past. Outside the station, the city reacted with a swirling mix of concern and curiosity. People gathered in small groups, engaging in fervent discussions about the case, eager to contribute to the ongoing investigation. The city now stood on edge, awaiting the resolution of the enigma surrounding the orphan girl as the police sifted through the leads pouring in from all corners. Despite the intense public interest, no substantial leads emerged. The girl seemed to have materialized out of nowhere, her past an enigmatic puzzle that resisted every attempt at solving it. By the next morning, the story had captured the attention of local news channels, further amplifying the spotlight on this perplexing case. Each broadcast added to the mounting pressure on the police department and fueled rampant speculation throughout the city. The search had become a public spectacle, closely watched by many but unsolved by all. 
The lack of credible information regarding the girl's identity or background only intensified the mystery surrounding her. Officers Jackson and Maroy found themselves grappling with a case that grew more complex with each passing hour. In an intriguing development, an anonymous tip caught their attention, steering them towards a wealthy neighborhood. The area, with its manicured lawns and sprawling estates, stood in stark contrast to the dimly lit streets where they had originally found the girl. While driving through the affluent neighborhood, a sharp intake of breath from the girl in the back seat immediately drew the officer's attention. As they passed a particularly grand mansion, her eyes widened, and her small hands clenched into fists. This unexpected reaction piqued the interest of officers Jackson and Maroy, suggesting a possible connection between the girl and the opulent residents. Determined to pursue this new lead, they approached the mansion. They were greeted by its owner, a figure renowned for his prominence in the community. The officers presented the girl's picture to him, keenly observing his reaction for any sign of recognition or any clue that might shed light on the girl's connection to this luxurious estate. The unfolding scenario held the potential to unravel the deepening mystery surrounding the orphan girl's past and identity. Despite the mansion owner's quick denial of any knowledge of the girl, officers Jackson and Maroy sensed something was amiss. His responses seemed overly rehearsed, his composure unusually steady, hinting at a possible underlying unease. This subtle sign of discomfort, though well-masked, did not escape the experienced officers. Seizing the opportunity, they requested a tour of the mansion under the guise of a routine inquiry. As they moved through the lavish halls, their attention was divided between the grandeur of the mansion and the girl, who remained silent but noticeably tense. Her every glance around the mansion appeared to be laden with an untold story. Back at the police station, officers Jackson and Maroy delved into the life of the mansion owner. They scrutinized financial records and past dealings, uncovering irregularities that raised questions. A pattern of complex and sometimes borderline legal transactions emerged, suggesting that the owner's polished facade might be concealing something more intricate and possibly dubious. These discoveries hinted at hidden layers beneath the owner's composed exterior, potentially critical to unraveling the mystery surrounding the orphan girl and her apparent connection to the grand mansion. As they delved deeper, they revealed more within the mansion owner's financial records. These records contained eyebrow-raising transactions involving large sums of money circulating in peculiar patterns, linked to obscure figures in the city's upper crust. This information sketched an image of a person who flirted with the boundaries of the law, skillfully staying just within the legal limits. However, none of these discoveries provided a direct connection to the girl with tangible proof. Consequently, Jackson and Maroy adopted a new tactic. They initiated discreet surveillance of both the mansion and its owner, hoping this constant vigilance would uncover what the paper trail hadn't. This new method of patient, silent observation became their primary strategy in solving the mystery of the girl connected to the mansion. During these moments of watchfulness, the girl's reactions began to communicate their own story. Her emotional responses became more pronounced, even a brief sighting of the mansion in a document or hearing the owner's name would transform her expression into one of unmistakable fear. Confronted with the puzzle of the girl's reactions and the unyielding outcome of their surveillance, they persisted in their quest for answers. The officers, realizing a subtler approach was yielding no results, decided to directly confront the mansion owner once more. This time, they were equipped not only with the evidence they had gathered but also with the determination to elicit a reaction that might crack his carefully maintained facade. Jackson and Maroy returned to the mansion, their steps firm and purposeful. The tension was palpable inside as they bombarded the owner with pointed questions. During this intense interrogation, the girl, who had been a quiet presence beside the officers, suddenly exhibited signs of profound distress. In a moment both delicate and startling, she broke her silence, whispering, there are others. This simple, yet haunting admission changed the course of the investigation dramatically. Realizing the significance of the girl's words, the officers acted swiftly to conduct a thorough search of the property. Jackson and Maroy called in additional personnel, briefing them with a sense of urgency that highlighted the potential gravity of the situation. The mansion, 
once an emblem of luxury, now became the subject of a severe and focused investigation. As the search commenced, their meticulous examination led them to a secluded wing of the mansion. There, they discovered a cleverly concealed door, integrated seamlessly into the wall's elaborate design. The discovery of this hidden section sent a wave of anxiety among the team. As they opened the secret door, a distressing sight unfolded, a series of small, dimly lit rooms. Each confined space revealed another child, each appearing as confused and forlorn as the girl had been. Like the first girl they had found, the discovery of more children hidden in such appalling conditions deeply shocked and angered the team. As they gathered more documents and testimonies from the rescued children, the grim reality of the situation became increasingly clear. The mansion owner had been conducting a heinous operation, exploiting vulnerable children for profit. The extent of his deceit and cruelty, hidden behind the facade of a respected community figure, left the officers feeling a mix of revulsion and disbelief. In the wake of these appalling revelations at the mansion, the owner was promptly arrested. He faced serious and numerous charges, including child exploitation, neglect, and a slew of related crimes. As he was taken into custody, the officers experienced a mix of stern satisfaction and deep sorrow. Justice was being served, but at such a great cost to the innocent. With the owner now in custody, attention swiftly turned to the well-being of the children. A rapid response was organized to ensure their safety and care. Social workers, child psychologists, and medical staff were brought in, each playing a vital role in starting the sensitive process of rehabilitation and care. For the officers, ensuring these children felt safe and cared for became a paramount concern, a glimmer of hope in a case shrouded in darkness. As news of the case spread, the local community reacted with shock, anger, and profound sympathy. Vigils were organized, and donations flooded in, with people from various backgrounds offering their support. This response from the community was a comforting display of unity and compassion, a collective embrace for the children who had suffered so much. If you like this story and believe it carries a positive message, you can share it with your family and friends. We also welcome your comments and thoughts on this narrative. Thank you for watching. Have a good time. Let's move on to the next story. During a typical day in class, an unexpected event transformed an ordinary moment into an extraordinary one when a young girl named Nicole's backpack began to move and wiggle on its own. This startling occurrence brought her teacher, Samantha, to tears when she discovered the surprising contents inside. As Samantha cautiously opened the backpack, she was astounded by what she found. She couldn't fathom how Nicole could have brought such a thing into the classroom. The question that loomed was, what exactly was inside Nicole's backpack that had caused such a commotion? What had she brought to school, and how would her teacher, Samantha, manage this unexpected situation? Samantha had already noticed that Nicole, usually a lively and active student, was behaving unusually quiet and reserved that day. Such a significant change in behavior was concerning to Samantha, who had plans to speak with Nicole privately to understand what was going on. During lunch break that day, an incident occurred that would not only disrupt Samantha's classroom but also soon involve the entire school. The commotion began unexpectedly when the boy seated next to Nicole drew attention to himself, causing the entire class, including Samantha, to be caught off guard. The children's reactions ranged from screams to jumping, and panic quickly spread throughout the room. Amidst the chaos, every student was in motion except for Nicole, who sat still, her head bowed towards the table, completely motionless. In the midst of the turmoil, Samantha managed to grab the arm of the boy who had first started screaming, inquiring about the reason for his outburst. With a trembling voice, he explained that he had seen Nicole's backpack move, which had startled him. This revelation came as a surprise to Samantha, who initially thought the boy was making it up, leading her to feel a mix of disbelief and annoyance. Asserting her authority, Samantha raised her voice to restore order in the classroom, instructing everyone to calm down and take their seats. She then directed Nicole to place her backpack on the table and open it. The tension was palpable as all eyes in the classroom focused on the backpack. With everyone watching, 
a very hesitant Nicole prepared to reveal the contents of her backpack. As Nicole prepared to open her backpack, it moved again, this time unmistakably. Panic erupted anew among the students, fueled by fears that they were all in danger and that the mysterious contents of the backpack could be life-threatening. The children's reactions were uncontrollable, with screams filling the room and a desperate urge to flee the classroom. The commotion quickly spread beyond Samantha's classroom, capturing the attention of teachers from nearby rooms. Emerging with expressions of concern, these teachers sought to understand the source of the disturbance. Reluctantly, Samantha realized the severity of the situation and advised her colleagues to evacuate the school with their students as swiftly as possible, though she couldn't provide a detailed explanation for this urgent action. In a whirlwind of activity, teachers rapidly organized their students and guided them out of the building, ensuring their safety was the top priority. Amidst this swift evacuation, everyone left the school building except for Nicole, who remained inside, still holding onto her backpack. Samantha, realizing Nicole's isolation, was the only person who decided to return to the school building to address the situation directly. After ensuring the safety of her students and waiting for the police to arrive, Samantha felt an undeniable responsibility not to leave one of her children to face the authorities alone. Stealing herself with a deep breath, Samantha initiated her slow approach towards the classroom. As she neared the door, a flood of possibilities raced through her mind. What could be inside Nicole's backpack? A weapon, evidence of some misdeed, or perhaps something innocuous that had been misunderstood? The uncertainty gnawed at her, but Samantha was resolute in her determination to uncover the truth. Samantha's fingers trembled as she reached for the classroom door handle. With a gentle push, the door creaked open, revealing the classroom. In a corner, Samantha locked eyes with Nicole, whose expression spoke volumes. It was a look that pierced Samantha's heart, the young girl seemed trapped, desperately searching for a way out. Summoning all her courage, Samantha spoke softly, Nicole, it's just me. Talk to me, please. Nicole hesitated, her eyes darting around the room, reflecting the internal turmoil. It was evident she was torn between trusting her teacher and the immense fear that had brought her to this point. Choosing her words carefully, Samantha said, Nicole, whatever is happening, I promise I'm here for you, and I believe you. Nicole's defenses began to crumble, tears streaming down her face as she whispered, revealing the truth that had led to this extraordinary situation. Miss, I really didn't want it to be like this, Nicole's voice broke through the tense atmosphere, her words barely audible over the distant, muffled commands of police on their megaphones outside. The resounding message was clear, the building was surrounded. The police were firm in their demands, broadcasting for Nicole to come out. Frustrated yet determined, Samantha shouted back through the window, give us time. She's just a child. She took a deep breath, turning back to Nicole, striving to create a sense of calm and protection amidst the escalating chaos. Samantha's assertiveness surprised even herself, she realized she wasn't just a bystander in this situation, she was Nicole's advocate, her protector. Samantha stepped closer to Nicole, her footsteps echoing on the classroom's cold floor. She called out to the officers, her voice tinged with desperation, Officers, please. Trust me on this. I know Nicole, and I truly believe we can resolve this peacefully, without any force. The officers outside exchanged glances, their hesitation visible even from a distance. They were clearly torn, their training clashing with the unfolding situation and the teacher's plea for trust and patience. Inside the classroom, the tension was palpable. Could the officers really take the risk? Was it feasible to rely on a teacher's intuition against the backdrop of their professional training? Meanwhile, Samantha, acting as much a guardian as a teacher, gently squeezed Nicole's trembling hands. She whispered words of strength and encouragement, her voice a soothing balm in the midst of uncertainty. Step by step, she guided Nicole, showing her unwavering support and belief in her students' innocence and the possibility of a peaceful resolution. We'll get through this together, Nicole, Samantha assured her student with a comforting determination. 
hand in hand, they began their slow yet decisive journey towards the exit. The mysterious backpack, still clutched tightly in Nicole's grasp, remained a source of speculation and fear. As they neared the exit, the police officers positioned themselves, forming an imposing line. Their faces, etched with concern and solemnity, presented an intimidating front. Samantha, however, moved forward with a resolute step, placing herself protectively between Nicole and the line of wary officers. Her posture was upright and firm, embodying the role of a shield for the vulnerable girl behind her. In that moment, Samantha's thoughts were clear and fierce, this child needed protection, not persecution. Her stance communicated a powerful message, one that transcended the tense silence that enveloped the scene. Her unwavering commitment to her students' well-being was evident, signaling to everyone present that she stood firmly as Nicole's advocate, determined to ensure her safety and understanding in a situation shrouded in mystery and fear. Over my dead body, Samantha thought fiercely, her protective instinct fully ignited as she stood firmly in front of Nicole. From behind the safety of classroom doors lining the hallway, other teachers of the school watched with bated breath. Their hushed conversations filled the air with questions and concerns. What's happening? Is it Nicole? Why Samantha? Their collective anxiety was palpable, everyone hoping for a peaceful resolution to the intense standoff. In this tense atmosphere, every eye in the hallway was fixed on Nicole and Samantha. Nicole's hand trembled as it reached for the backpack zipper. As she slowly slid it open, each inch revealing more, the moment felt like an eternity. The classroom was so silent that the rest of the world seemed to fade away, leaving only this critical moment. Then, as the bag was partially opened, it began to rustle from within. The movement was subtle, but it intensified everyone's gaze. Their bodies leaned forward involuntarily, drawn to the mystery inside. What could possibly be causing such a commotion? And then, to the astonishment of everyone, a tiny kitten with soft gray fur and bright blue eyes cautiously peeked out from the bag. The revelation was both unexpected and heartwarming, dispelling the fear and tension with the innocent face of a small animal. The situation, which had been fraught with anxiety and apprehension, suddenly shifted, as the true nature of the mysterious contents was revealed to be far from dangerous. The tense atmosphere shattered instantly, replaced by gasps of surprise and murmurs of delight. The menacing secret of the backpack was out, a harmless, curious little kitten. Relief washed over the crowd, smiles breaking out everywhere as the weight of fear was lifted by the lightness of joy. Tears streamed down Nicole's face as she began to explain, I found him abandoned on my way to school. I didn't know what to do. I was scared he would get hurt outside. I just wanted to protect him. Her voice, soft and shaky, portrayed her overwhelming emotions, a mix of fear, concern, and relief. Samantha knelt down, her eyes level with Nicole's. It's okay to want to help, she said gently, but there are safer ways. We were all worried. Nicole nodded, wiping her eyes and understanding the gravity of her unintended actions. Samantha, warm and caring, emphasized understanding over reprimand. The police officers, still reeling from the tension, now wore different expressions, a mix of relief and a hint of embarrassment. They had prepared for a threat, and it turned out to be a kitten. Some chuckled, while others patted Nicole's shoulder, offering sincere apologies for the misunderstanding. One by one, teachers approached, offering gentle hugs and words of comfort to Nicole, assuring her that everything was going to be okay. The joyous atmosphere that replaced the initial tension was a testament to the power of understanding and compassion in the face of uncertainty. Now, the young girl, once isolated by fear, felt the warmth and embrace of a caring community rallying around her. Later, Samantha sat quietly, replaying the day's events in her mind. She mused on the importance of communication as a bridge between confusion and clarity. The day had been a stark reminder of the potential consequences of misunderstanding. The incident became a turning point for the entire school. Classes discussed the importance of empathy, communication, and not jumping to conclusions. 
students learned that fear often stemmed from the unknown and that seeking understanding could dispel that fear. It was an unexpected but valuable lesson. Nicole, surrounded by friends, held the kitten close, gratitude shining in her eyes. Thank you, Samantha, she whispered. The day had started with fear and confusion, but it ended on a note of trust and mutual understanding. The bond between Nicole and Samantha, strengthened by the day's events, stood as a testament to the power of compassion and trust within a community. If you enjoyed the story and believe it carries a positive message, feel free to share it with your family and friends. We would also love to hear your comments and thoughts about this narrative. Thank you for watching, and have a great time.